Good morning, everybody. I hope you had a really good weekend. And I wanted to start off by saying a particular well done to our Duke of Edinburgh groups. And thank you, Miss Horgan. So we had, I think there were two silver groups and three bronze expeditions out this weekend. It was a little bit rainy and a little bit wet. Um, if you teach lower five, please, can you be kind to them? Maybe let them off homework. And that includes you, Senor Castro. So let's have a look. Here are some photos. There they are. So soggy, but not disheartened. There are silvers. Uh, I think that's another bronze group there. By the fire, try to warm up. There we are. You can tell the conditions weren't fantastic, but at least it wasn't incredibly hot and baking hot. So well done. Can we give them a round of applause? Well done. And the organizer said they were the best groups that they'd had, the best bronze groups. Um, so well done bronze, because I know it's a practice expedition, the first time that you've ever headed out to do anything like that. And uh, you did very well, particularly in a pandemic year. Now I have been sent some photographs of some tiny, insects and animals. This is quite a tiny snail on a leaf. And it was sent in, Hope sent it in, but Ellen took the photo. So thank you very much. That's a very cute little snail there on that leaf that they found. And we had a tiny moth sent in by Mrs. Edwards. And she said it's about half the size of her thumbnail. It was very tiny, but she thought it was beautiful. And then Mr. Craddock sent in a photograph of this tree. So that's obviously a tree that's, that's died a number of years ago, but probably a home to lots of wildlife there. So thank you, Mr. Craddock. That was out on your walk this weekend. And I traveled up to Cambridgeshire to see my mum and dad, and I saw some great wildlife. Now, this is Ely Cathedral. And that is a peregrine falcon. And there is a family of peregrine falcons there that nest on the cathedral. There were two adults and three young, and they were learning, they were flapping their wings, trying to get their strength up. And I've not seen peregrine falcons that close up um, before. Really, really striking birds. And then even more exciting, slightly blurred, but I saw hares and hares running around. And um, much bigger than a rabbit. You can see the long ears and the long, strong back legs. And they were just running and chasing each other up and down the fields. Um, and you don't get them, well, I, I don't see them very much in Dorset, but if you head to East Anglia, you will see hares sometimes. So that was a magical moment for me. I love that. Now, I wonder how many of you have been following the Euro uh, football tournament? Um, England fans, not sure how you felt about that nil-nil draw, possibly felt that you could have, could have got something more out of it. I think, I think Scotland viewed that as a win. But we're going to go over to our very own Gary Lineker. Uh, it is Mr Kirtland, our football pundit, for his Euros update. Are you there, Mr Kirtland? Are you there, Mr Kirtland? Yes, Mr Holloway, I'm here. Go for it. Give us your right. update. So, so the report so far is that it's been a, a series of shocks. We started with sadly the shock of Christian Eriksen, but the relief of his recovery under the sort of swift response of the first aiders. And then there was the shock of seeing just how good the French were, which uh, was a little intimidating. And then the bigger shock of seeing just how much better than the French, the Italians were, which makes us worry, is there any chance for anybody else? Um, there wasn't the shock of England because we were as uninspiring as probably we all expected us to be. And uh, a bit of a shock about uh, Scotland's midfield. They were pretty decent, although not quite as good as Graham Soonis thought they might have been. I don't know who he was watching. Um, and just when we thought it was safe to play Germany because they looked useless, suddenly they decide they look like they're going to win it again. So we've got some favourites and we've got some people we don't, we, we know have gone but it's still all to play for in this final week of group games. Um, but I suspect, Mrs Holloway, the key thing we need to talk about is the sweepstake. 
Now there is the staff sweepstakes. There is the fact that uh, sadly, uh, Mrs. McDonald is out already as Turkey got stuffed. Uh, sorry, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. McDonald. Uh, yes, Mrs. Atkin and Mrs. Harris are through. They're looking like potential winners. There was a key fixture when maths took on drama and Mr. Thomas in maths won two nil. We don't quite know whether that's causing eruptions further on. And one of the key fixtures, perhaps Mrs. Holloway, you need to be aware of is of course that Mrs. Holloway got absolutely hammered three nil by Miss Marshall in the office. And uh, well, best least said about that, the better. So thank you very much, Mrs. Holloway. And back to you in the studio. Oh, thank you very much. Can we give Mr. Curtin a round of applause? I, I think there's a job there, BBC. I think maybe, you know, once Mr. Gary Lineker, he's looking a bit old. Once Mr. Gary Lineker, he's looking a bit old. So let's, let's try and let's see if we can meet, no, mute Mr. Curtin. We're, ba we're back in the room. Okay, now in my iConnect, I wrote this weekend about the Welsh football team. And uh, they've been performing very well. I noticed that Mr. Kirtland didn't really refer to them, uh, but they are through. So that's great to the level 16. And the Wales team has some of the best players in the world, such as Gareth Bale, but it's also got some players who don't play for these top clubs. And yet their strength as a team is that they all play together and pull together. Um, and they're very coherent. They've got a shared ethos. They put the work in. Now, last Friday, I signed off all the GCSE grades and all the A-level grades for everyone across the whole school. And the made me realize just how much effort has been put in by the pupils, but also how much effort has been put in by the staff. They have put hours and hours into those grades. And a really good, positive, shared ethos as a school pulls us all together. We have a determination to support one another, to um, achieve our goals, no matter what. And that really enables us as a school to flourish in music, in drama, in sport, in STEM, in all subject areas. So this attitude, this approach means that our TH pupils do really well post 18 and in their future careers. They've got a can-do attitude, but they're not complacent. And at TH, they don't just expect things to be handed to them on a plate. They know that they're gonna graft and pull together and they're gonna to have to step up and take the initiative, even if individually they are the equivalent of Gareth Bale of the uh, school community. Now, one example of stepping up and taking the initiative and saying, can I do something to contribute to the community? Jess Ellis and Lucy Lockwood in the sixth form, they have asked if they can set up a new initiative called Acts of Kindness Day. So I'm gonna ask them if they are there. Are you there, Jess and Lucy, to tell us about it? Hi, yeah, we're here. Um, hello everyone, we're here to talk to you today about Talbot Heath's Act of Kindness Day, Awareness Day, which we are having this Friday. At break time, each year group will have a different station around the school where there'll be post-it notes and pens for you to write kind messages on them and hide them around the school for others to find and spread happiness. Um, the year group stations are as followed. So upper three is an entrance one, lower four is an entrance two, upper four is by the Genius Bar, Lower five is in the corridor by the hall and lower six is in the downstairs common room. Thank you for listening and we hope you will take this opportunity on board as one kind word can make someone else's day better. Thank you. Thank you, Jess. Thank you, Lucy. So acts of kindness, lovely to spread some messages of kindness to others across the school. Right, we've got some notices this morning. I have a few more athletics results. This is from the Dorset Schools Athletics Competition. Year seven girls in the 800 metres, Polly Evans came seventh. Lexi Brown in the junior girls, 800 metres came second and Annabelle Beals came 12th. And Annabelle also came 10th in the long jump in Dorset. Can we give them a round of applause? Well done. <laughs> and it is a reminder that Cricket Club, um, it starts today. Because of the weather, we will be in the sports hall. It is four to five p.m. today, um, so that will be happening. Uh, and we look forward to welcoming you to that. Doesn't matter if you've had no uh, cricket experience at all. 
Right. Well done, everybody. Have a super week. Thank you. Bye.